Welcome to Exo Magic Trick number 261. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 261 to 264. Hey, in this trick, we want to randomly generate numbers between 1 and 100, except for they can't be divisible by 3. Well, this is a great question, and actually all three of these answers came from www.mrexcel.com, the message board. So you can click here and read about them. And I have lots of notes up here too because uh, there's lots of cool elements. We're going to see how to solve it in a couple different ways. The first thing I thought about was, man, I don't even know how many numbers there are uh, between 0 and 100 that are divisible by 3. So this is what I did. I did 1, and I did a formula equals 1 above plus 1. And then 3 is the next one, so what I said was equals the 1 above plus 2, right? So now I have this sequence, and I can copy these two. That's just a number there, but these two are always going to add 1 above and 4 above. Now notice, if you didn't know this, these are two different formulas, and if you highlight them and use the fill handle, it'll copy both of those formulas every other row. So I'm going to click and drag down. Click and drag down to the bottom. Sure enough, that gives us exactly the sequence of numbers uh, between 1 and 100, but skips over the ones that are divisible by 3. No 6, no 9, no 12. All right, so then I just simply went, hey, I can do use my Alt equals, which is auto sum, and click at the top, Control Shift down arrow, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, even though I don't need it. It just jumps the screen back up. Sure enough, I got uh, 3,367. Well, that's not it. It's not really sum. We want count. And count counts numbers. All right, so we get 67. Now, um, here's one way we could approach um, doing this. We could just use the index function. Ready? Equals index. And we need an array and a row number. Well, the row number, we can build a little randomizing thing. But the array, how in the world are we going to do that? Well, we could build it by hand. Um, we'd start with curly brackets and then a 1, comma, 2, comma, 4, comma. Oh, that would be terrible to type that all out. But watch this. This is a great trick. And actually, this formula came from uh, John Vander Hayden. And I hope he didn't type out the formula because the formula is huge. It just goes on forever. It has all the numbers typed in there. Uh, but here's a trick um, that we can use. We can uh, click in this cell right here, Control Shift Down Arrow, and I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. And as we've seen in many other videos, if you want to store your array actually in the formula, there's an easy way to do it. Instead of typing all out, you create a formula like that. You create a reference here and then highlight it and hit the F9 key. Shoop just like that we have our little array. That's a great trick if you want to store like your table for VLOOKUP or INDEX or whatever and you don't want to store it in somewhere on your sheet. Now comma and the row number we need to randomly generate a row number between 1 and 67 because there's 67 numbers here so we'll go uh, we could use RAND between if you have 2007 but if you have other versions you use INT RAND INT let me do this one. Int does uh, takes the integer. Rand generates a number between 0 and 1. So if we multiply it times 67, this is always uh, between 0 and 1. So when it's 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 times 67 is like 33-something. And then the int will take the 33. When it's... Um, Oh, no, yeah, and sorry, when it's 67, yeah, when this one's 0.5, then it's 33. When this one's really near 1, like 0.999 times 67, it'll give us the 67. However, the RAND can generate a number that's uh, really, 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 really close to 0. So that's why we always have to add 1 when we use this method of randomizing. Close parentheses. Now, that'll generate numbers randomly between 1 and 67. We close on the index and then hit Enter. Now, I want to be able to check this, right, because... Sometimes I mess up when I'm making formulas, you know, and I hit F9. Well, I'm doing it so fast, I, my eyes can't work. So I'm going to do a little formula that will check it for me. The mod function will give you a remainder. So guess what? I'm going to take the number, this, and always divide it by 3. 
Well, guess what? The mod gives a remainder. So when if there's a number 33 here divided by 3, there would be zero remainder. But when it's uh, 32, the remainder will be 1. So guess what? We could build a true false by just saying equals to 0. Sorry is not equal to 0. So not is less than, greater than 0. Because we want it to say true when it's not divisible by 0. So now I can just run F9, which is randomize. Um, actually, F9 is recalculate all the things that have changed in the workbook. So I'm random, and see, I'm getting that true all the time, so that formula looks good. Now let's think about a different way uh, to not only count the numbers between 1 and 100 that are not divisible by 3, but also a different formula. I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to just um, start off with part of it. I'm going to go row and then indirect. In, uh, and then I'm going to put in quotes 1 colon 100. 1 colon, 1 colon 100, end quote. What this does is one when you put a reference like this, 1 colon 100, that means row 1 to row 100. This is text. The indirect will convert it to an actual series of row references. And then the row function will look at all those references and deliver the numbers 1 to 100. And if you highlight this and hit the F9 key calculate, you can see that that's, in fact, what it does. Control Z, be sure to undo that if you don't want to keep it. Now, again, we get our uh, not and 0. Let's just see what happens when we do that. I'm going to hit F9. Should I forget true, 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 true. Oh, yes, Control C. We forgot to put the mod. So we're trying to simulate what we did over here, mod. So we're going to take that little chunk. Um, the, the, the mod here, and this will give us our 1 through 100, right? And so we'll mod 3. And so now this mod, we've taken the 1 to 100. Because we get, got mod 3, it'll either give us 1 remainder, 2 remainder, or 0. And so what we want is not 0. And so this will deliver a bunch of trues and falses. If I hit F9, sure enough, true, true, false, true, true, false. Well, how can we, in this case, we're counting how many. If this case, if we have trues and falses, how do we convert a series of trues and falses to ones and zeros? We simply put parentheses around it and multiply by one. You could also use double negative. Now, I'm going to put this all inside of some product. And there we go. That will count all of the values between 1 and 100 that are not divisible by 3. Looks like I forgot something. I'm going to say no and then OK. I got some product. I just need one more parentheses right here. And then that one on the end work. Enter. Now I actually want to scoop this out because this is going to, we're going to use this in our formula to randomize. I need to get all the way from the mod to that uh, right there. Copy. Actually, we could go all the way to this. Uh, this is not zero. Copy, escape. So now we've uh, gener counted them with just a formula without having that whole array over there. Now let's uh, come over here and type equals and paste that. That's all the trues and falses, right? We need to somehow uh, use this idea and um, generate random numbers. Well, we're going to use the small function and the if function. The if function will help us use this true-false sequence to grab a bunch of numbers between 1 and 100. And then we'll use the small on the outside and the randomizer for the last argument of small. So let's see how this works. Small and then if. So the if. Because we have a bunch of trues and falses here, we have a bunch of trues and falses here. If we put just simply the row and in indirect as the value of true, comma, remember, this is just this first part, this mod and this not equal to 0. That's just a bunch of trues and falses. So if we put right here value of true, if we just put this all the way to there, this is the part that generates just the numbers 1 to 100. So we're going to have a bunch of trues and falses. And only the trues will then relate to this 1 to 100. And that's a way of generating all of those values. In fact, and then we have to close parentheses on the if. If we were to highlight 
all the way to the if and hit F9 if it'll even fit on the screen. There we go. We have, uh, we can see the bottom ha half of 43, 44, false, 46, 47, false. Well, when we use the small, the small will ignore those falses. And since there's exactly 67, we can randomly uh, select values from this array. I'm going to control Z. And how do we do that? With the small comma, and then we use our int rand, as we talked about before, times 67 plus 1, and close parenthesis on the small. So there it is, a bunch of numbers with falses. This last little part will generate a number between 1 and 67, which will take the small, either the smallest one or the biggest one. Uh, and this is an array formula, so you have to hold Control Shift and Enter. And then I'm going to copy this formula down here, and I'm going to hit F9 a bunch, and it looks like they're both working fine. Now I'm going to go up. Um, Barry Houdini gave us uh, this amazing formula here, and a guy um, right here, Luke B, also posted some VBA code. So let's go over here to this and click on this and see if we can go find that VBA code. We're just going to copy it and paste it into the uh, VBA editor. There's the right. There it is. So try this macro, he says. I'm going to copy this. Control C, Alt Tab, Alt F11. And I'm going to find Insert Module. And I'm going to put uh, from LBC. I forget what his. Uh, I'm going to paste it. Control S. I'm going to click Continue because that's in I'm in compatibility mode. And now let's see what that does. Actually, we better go look at it first. Let's see if the macro's there. Alt F8 gives us our list of macros. And divide three out. I actually want to go and look at this by clicking Edit. So it looks like it's got from 1 to 10. And then down here, it's concatenating column A and N. So it's going to go from A1 to A10. Let's go back over and uh, take a look. Why don't we put it, let's see, A E25 down to E30. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to change this to E. And I'm going to go from N equals 25 to 30. Control S. Uh, that's to save it. And then I'm going to click Continue. I'm going to close this uh, VBA editor. And now I'm going to uh, run that macro. Alt F8, divide by 3, and then click Run. Zip. And just like that, it gave us, a, looks like it gave us a blank there. Let's try that again. Alt F8, and we could easily assign a keyboard shortcut to this. If we come over to Options right here, we could do Control. I'm going to hold Shift and D. Uh, and then I'm going to click uh, Close here. And I'm going to try Control-Shift-D, 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 Control-Shift-D. So the only uh, pro maybe problem is it uh, shows a blank when uh, it could show uh, a 0 there. But there you go. That's the VBA code. Uh, so we saw a couple different formulas, a little bit of VBA code, and how awesome the Mr. Excel message board is. All right, see you next trick.